All right. Hello and welcome to the next episode of season two of Token Games Life Stories. Or I really should just say life stories because it's not only token games things, it's a whoever shows up and has a funny ass or fucked up story. Today's guest, we have Blade's Disciple in Training, the deepest walker in Vegas, a one day walker. Hey, how's it going, everybody? And of course, we have the longtime legend, the international man of mystery, and possibly a second child, our Lord and Savior, the Lord Zenkai. Hello. Oh, brevity was always your specialty. All right, so this uh, episode is going to be very, very particularly special and unique because possibly for the first time ever, I'm not changing people's names around. Because most of the people involved, save for literally one person, I fucking hate. Also, they're full of shit and they still try to lie out of the situation. So, you know, you can kind of think of it as an easy way for me to clear the air. Instead of giving somebody a long-winded story, I can give them a comical long-ass story. So <laughs> All right. And uh, uh, if you can, uh, Zenkai, turn your mic up a little bit. Daywalker, if you can, turn your mic up a little bit. But if it's as far as it goes, it's all good. What I can do is turn my mic up that listen to you guys a little bit. Okay. Now. All right. So I'm going to just state right now, there will be some time travel within this episode. So if you're never sure or if you're not sure about the time frame, I strongly suggest when you hear a date, you keep it in the chat and type it so I can let you know so you can figure out easily where we are. But. For the time being, we're going to start with what I will call 2015, because I'm pretty sure this happened in 2015. All right. So for those who may or may not know, some states hold conventions in water park uh, adjacent hotels or hotels that also double as water parks or water resorts, whatever term you want to use. Pretty much all means the same. One particular year at a convention called Colossal Con, I road tripped. It was me, Brandon, the only other guy in this story I pretty much like and respect. Uh, Nicholas, who I don't respect him, but it's hilarious that everything about him is hilarious to me. And crazy white girl. Oh, wait, no. Let me see. I think I remember exactly what she is. Oh, crazy Italian white girl. Uh, Gina Kalua Kalura some some shit. I don't know. I barely ever talked to her and she's a fucking psychopath. Um, Okay, so this is what happened. We start having a road trip together because there's enough space. We got a big ass van and we didn't fill it to max capacity. It can hold about eight people, but we got about four. So everybody got space. Now, eventually on this road trip, we start noticing there's a lot of dysfunction or for lack of a better term, aggression, both open and micro between Gina and Nicholas. However, me and Brandon are not in a position to do anything about it. Not because, you know, we're in a car driving on the road, but because uh, we don't actually know what the issues are. But don't worry, they'll come up before the end of this little spat is over. So the first thing me and Brandon start noticing in the car is that from my position, I can see Nicholas checking his text and not keeping his eyes on the road practically longer than 10 seconds. Now, immediately, this is more than a red flag for me. This is a I feel like I need to beat the shit out of you situation. However... Gina is in the car. And as we know, crazy people, ironically, love to call the cops unless they're getting called on them. But I basically heavily imply, hey, Nick, you want to not look at text messages while you're on the freeway driving? And he, resp- and he basically trivializes it and brushes it off. And Brandon looks at me. And I can't remember what we were whispering and mumbling. But with some along the lines of, dude, is he seriously doing that? Yeah, I can fucking see him from my angle. See, the, the driver's seat, because this is North America, is on the left. And I'm sitting on the right side of the vehicle in the, fir- in the second row of seats. So I got a full view of him. And Brandon has a few, full view of Gina. Gina does not help support and aid us in getting him to put that phone the fuck down. And it was naturally stressful for me because I've actually been in a situation where dumbasses were doing that and none of us in the back seat know or paid attention to it. And we almost uh, bit the big one. 
So naturally, I'm just, I have a clenched fist, Arthur style, almost this whole fucking ride. So anyways, at some point in time, uh, Gina decides she wants to talk to Nick and she keeps stating things four different times, the same thing. For example, good morning, the sun's up, early riser, how are you today? Like shit like that four times in a row. The whole trip. Now, Nick is getting visibly annoyed about this, but hey, you know how it is. When you see a couple fighting, sometimes it's a good idea to jump in. Sometimes it's a bad idea to jump in. But if you don't know, you don't do shit till you know. Now, we eventually get to the convention, and literally, before we get out the parking lot, those two start yelling at each other about something extremely trivial and petty. So I get my stuff out. I get Brandon's stuff out. It looked like Brandon was about to say something or they was about to sweep him into it. So I lightly nudge because, you know, I'm not like forcing him. I'm like, hey, we can't do shit about it right now, bro. And I'm not the selfish asshole type. I don't pretend people don't exist in the middle of a convention when they have a problem. If you do that, you're not really a good friend or you don't understand the concept of a friend. But I know that we're in a different state from where these issues started. There's nothing we can do about it while we're here. So, uh, we get our stuff out and we're about to, uh, trail out and Gina mentioned something about moving or getting house keys or whatnot. So I asked what's going on. Apparently Nick was moving out of the apartment he was in with his girlfriend because he wanted to save money for his final two semesters of college. If memory serves, he's getting an accounting degree or he needed a little bit extra money for an accounting degree. And also, you know, he's a college kid. So it's, and this is you know, not in the pandemic. So it's actually not that frowned upon unless you're just a douchebag who has no concept of how the value of a dollar for him to move back in, especially since he was super young. However, Gina, who is about, I want to say six years, seven years older than him, decided she wanted to move in with Nick in his mom's house by force, did not ask for permission or nobody. Now, if there ever was a crazy flag blowing in the wind right now, that was it. They see that shit from space. I don't know too many crazy chicks on that level. And when I asked her, and here's the thing, before she grabbed her bag out, Nick told me why he was doing it. So then I asked Gina, oh, okay, so what are you going to do with your apartment? It's like, oh, no, I don't need an apartment. I'm, I'm going to be Nick. I'm going to be with Nick. Uh, I have to move in because someone has to protect him. I was like, I'm sorry, what? Now, for those who haven't seen him, go ahead over to pick dumb section. Gina is five foot three, four on a good day. And according to her, no one's seen medical proof of it, but I'm not saying she made it up. Who knows with her? She's claiming she has a medical condition that has a given her a built in cap on how much muscle she can grow or gain. So basically, her grip strength and muscle strength will never exceed that of a 13-year-old or some shit like that. I don't know. Also, this is the house Nick grew up in and has been in his whole entire life. So I blatantly ask her, I don't know what, what are you supposed to be protecting Nick from? Now, at this point in time, this me does not know that, you know, she's moving in by force. Anyways. So they have a little bit of a scat and argument before she can answer the question. And me and Brandon walked off, like I said. Now, speed forward to coming on the way back. She starts doing the saying something four times in a row thing. And now, even though she claims she doesn't want him on the phone, she's literally distracting him while he's driving by thinking it's funny to sit up in the seat, reach across because she's short as fuck, lean almost half her body across, and poke Nick in the face. Because she wants attention while he's driving on the fucking freeway. I don't know what the fuck to do to say at this point, but I just say, hey, Gina, can you, when you say something to anyone, you know, you, you just know, you don't have to say the same thing four times over with different ways, right? Now, again, I am aggravated by it, but that's not the chief thing annoying me right now. Cause like I said, Nick never staring at the road longer than 10 fucking seconds. 
And Brandon just yells out, oh my fucking God, thank you. So I was like, well, this got awkward. And I don't say much for the rest of the ride. But then again, on carpools, I'm pretty quiet. Carpools, talking is a delicate balance. Some people like it, some people don't like it, and some people like it until they're trying to go to sleep or something. So I, I have a speak, don't speak until spoken to situation, right? Now, um, speed forward to the end of the convention. I give Nick any money I was due or I gave him some gas money or whatnot. Brandon said, hey, it was nice meeting you, all that jazz. We, we link up on Facebook. I practically have never spoken with Gina at this point, yada, yada, blah, 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 blah. Now, speed forward to November or December of 2015. Nick went ice skating or was learning to ice skate, and he had uh, some one of his female friends teaching him. It's a pretty staple tradition in Illinois. Certain areas of downtown Chicago, they get a temporary uh, ice skating pit, and people go in there and ice skate. Now, here's the thing. I eventually, at some point in time, notice, when I look at the picture a second time or a third time, I was like, wait a minute. There's two girls in here that look alike but they also somewhat look familiar. Now, these two girls are twins, Ashley and Erica, Sugar, Sugar. Oh, I, I would also like to say I don't hate them. I have no, like, dirty-minded bullshit interest in them. Everything's pretty much platonic. The twins are cool, or at least one of them is. I don't know, maybe the other one hates me. It's not really sure. The names Ashley and Erica are way too common, but there is a tall Ashley somewhere or a tall Erica somewhere who hates me because, I don't know, she thinks I want to bang her sister. Not knowing that her sister's my ex. I didn't want to bang her sister. We already did that shit. I, it's really unclear. But they moved apart and they hate each other now anyway. So she probably shouldn't hate me. But I digress. So I started talking in that one picture. This one picture from like November, December, that same year. And I asked them, wait, wait, are those twins? Or am I just like, are they related to something? Because this is when I'm in the middle of getting new glasses. Because unfortunately, there was a... A winter accident or there was a meat freezer or something I was working in and my glasses fell into a state of not being able to be repaired and I was better off literally getting a new frame right so I wasn't sure legitimately wasn't sure so one or both of them started talking to me in there and it was pretty normal shit you know a friendship didn't necessarily arise out of this like I said I, sometimes I see them at con well I didn't say it earlier but sometimes I see them at conventions sometimes I don't I don't specifically like hunt them down and try to do some smutty shit or whatever. I've had friends want me to take a picture with them and not even realize it was them until later, but that's how conventions are. You don't know necessarily how many times you've interacted with someone. You only remember the ones that were the longest engagements, you know, or they did something really cool. So fucking, um, at some point in time, Gina decides to add me on her Facebook right now we're nearing the end of the year shit you not one of the first conversations she told me or asked me about I was like hey uh is Nick cheating on me or something like that with specifically those two girls it's like first off that disgusts me on so many levels not the idea that someone may be cheating on you that, that that does happen. That's gonna happen. That's life. Someone may think that. No, it's the fact that when people assume a twin is going to magically do some smutty shit at the exact same time with the same person as their, as their sibling. That's fucked up to me. And unfortunately, as we all know, in North America, one of the most popular genres of porn is uh, relative porn, if you catch my drift. So I'm just like, hey, Gina, what, what is this really about? Because when someone asks me something like that, like, I'm going to fucking know. I know there's some deeper underlying shit. And I know her and Nick was having issues. Maybe Nick is cheating and she thinks it's one of them. Or maybe she just thinks Nick is cheating in general. Don't know who it is. So after about four or five minutes of conversation, basically boiled down to me realizing, oh, she's just insecure because Nick has openly admitted he likes tall women. I'm like, he's six foot three. Of course, he likes tall fucking women. That doesn't mean he's going to magically decide I'm going to slit around whatever tall woman I can find. Because first off, a six foot woman is a rarity internationally. Period. Internationally, a six foot woman is a rarity. So 
the fact that he's dating you and he's just acknowledging a fetish does not mean that he's doing shit. Because I can tell you right now, and Daywalker, as well as Zenkai, we even had these conversations indirectly and directly uh, at on and off. 90% of dudes don't end up with the woman who has the preferred frame or body that he wants. True. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of people who know who Phoenix Marie is, but there ain't a lot of people who are built like Phoenix Marie. I'm not in the blondes, but I have openly acknowledged on numerous occasions. Hey, if I had someone who was built like Phoenix Marie, and they're not crazy, or they can hold the conversation, I'm putting two kids in that one. They're not gonna be twins though. I'm scared to raise twins. I openly admit it. So I basically try to calm her down and do Nick somewhat of a solid because. This is not the first time I've seen a woman magically decide when she finds out her man's fetishes or that her, his body preferences she does not meet. She just decides everybody around him is an enemy if they're prettier than me or got closer to the build. You know? Sean. Oh, shit. Sean, what's up with your mic again? Uh, did you... Hey, Sean, say make a sentence real quick. Was that you with that static? <laughs> Right now, the thing is doing something weird. Yeah, uh, try plugging it in and plugging it out. Uh, uh, try unplugging it and plugging it back in, I mean. No, I see. I was uh, I was in on my uh, screen, mm -hmm. and I'm using the face bar. For some reason, it, it started minimizing and unminimizing. Like. Oh, well, uh, change what your button is for uh, push to talk. Um, That might help. I changed my button to delete. Anyways, so I just basically tried to comment. I was like, look, I don't know, Ashley, Erica. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you they're not sluts. They're not sluts. I'll tell you guys that they're not sluts. Or, or to, at this point, no one has proven they're sluts. But I don't like to make assumptions and shit like that. Um, and I was like, look, liking tall women does not equate to him automatically cheating on you. This isn't the first time I've seen a woman, including people I've dated, getting insecure about a body frame. A lot of women lie to themselves, but it doesn't help that guys, they go with it because they know, oh, if I don't, if I say something that offends her, I'm not getting laid tonight. See, that doesn't fix the primary issue because the primary issue is insecurity. But and then there's yeah. also a bunch of people are like, well, you know, I was nice to him. I was hitting on him. And it's like, well, some people's nice is not actually. Yeah, exactly. I fucking hate that shit. Because there are people who like, I, uh, I think I told Daywalker about this a long time ago, like a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago, 12 years. But I hate that when I have a game that I don't want, I don't like it. or I'm just done playing it. If I want someone to, who likes it to borrow it or I give it to them. Anytime it's a woman, except for like four people, of the 20 times I've given away a game to a woman, there is some automatic implication of me wanting ass or me trying to be the boo. How about I just don't want it anymore and I don't give my shit to GameStop? So then they started getting mad at me because if I give it to you, I don't want it, and you say, uh... Hey, I would just like to point out, you know, I'm not like, you're cool, but I'm not into you that way. You know what? Fuck it. Don't, don't waste your time. Because I wasn't, this has nothing to do with attraction. So why are you giving me the game? Because I don't want it anymore. Yeah, okay. I was like, okay. So then I gave it to her fucking little brother, and he never let her play it. And she was salty about it for a fucking, like, six months. It was hilarious. She's still my friend. I'm not going to say her name. I do like and respect her still, but it was just hilarious. Maybe I just don't want the fucking game anymore. Anyways, and I don't think she half listened to me when I was explaining this to her. So then at the end of it, she says, well, no worries, I guess. If he does anything with them, me, you, and Kiva are just going to beat them up. I was like, I'm sorry, what? Oh, yeah, we're going to jump them. I was like, hold the fuck up. First off, premeditated makes it a felony last I checked. And even if it doesn't, still illegal. Also, uh... I don't know how you're expecting this ass whooping to go down when don't nobody know where they live. Also, seriously, he's not doing anything sexual with them. Mind you, I haven't even asked or brought this shit up to Nick yet. So me and Nick end up having to do something he was fucking late for or something, I believe, at my school's uh, built-in uh, filming studio. And I tell him, like, bro, uh, yo, I think something's up with your girl. 
So then right when I mentioned the twins, like, oh, yeah, yeah, she thinks I'm doing stuff with the twins. I was like, so more people have told you about this? Like, yeah. I was like, bro, she's literally saying that I'm going to help her beat up two white girls. I don't even fucking know. First off, I don't know who started the bullshit or who's not paying attention to how the real world works in North America. But uh, domestic violence, interracial domestic violence involving a white woman, very, very low. Because we know we're getting the maximum, whatever the fuck there is, if we even get to the police station to be reined in and shit at, at the course and whatnot. You ain't gonna beat no white woman if you a big ass black dude. It's just your worst fucking nightmare even being accused of doing shit. Equal rights will exist when we have equal rights. We don't have equal sentencing. though, So we don't have equal rights. So anyways, um, he was like, eh, it's not that big. It was like, nigga, is you stupid? Then I realized what I'm talking to. I'm, I'm talking to a, a very young delusional man child. But that being said, you know, he's in that, that at the time he was in that weird space of man childness where it's not annoying and people don't hate you for being immature constantly all the fucking time yet. Cause you got to remember this dude is like, I think he didn't even turn. He wasn't even 21 yet when this is going down, like he was going to turn 21 February of the following year. So I'm just like, you're acting your age, but you're being delusional about the situation you're in. Let's recap real quick. She moved herself in without parents permission into his parents' house. His mom fucking hates her overcharges her for rent, which I find out and we'll bring up later. And on top of it, she keeps specifically going out of her way to ask people, are are you cheating on me with two twins? Everybody else older than him, maybe even younger, knows this is a crazy ass motherfucker right here. So I'll leave it alone because there there ain't shit for me to do. Then one day, Ashley, yeah, Ashley started showing up in my people you may know in school or something, which is the only reason I think I even had recognized her initially because I don't know. I don't remember if she showed up in my people you may know box before or after uh, talking to Gino. But here's the thing. Back in the day, people you may know, it didn't sometimes show up in the middle of your Facebook feed at the top. It always stayed there, right? So every day, I would fucking see her, and and I thought to myself, in the middle of motion capture class, how the fuck do you say that last name? And I just asked her, hey, uh, nothing personal, I'm not trying to, like, do anything to you, but you keep showing up on people you may know, what, how the fuck do you say your last name? Like, that was it. Completely basic, normal shit. And that was it. I got last name curious when I was in the military because some people find funny last names and sometimes I just like to say to myself, I wonder if I can pronounce that last name correctly. That type of thing. Like nothing serious. In fact, after that happened, I don't even think I physically spoke to, verbally spoke to her until almost a year or two full years later. So my connection with these two is practically the same as anyone else. I've seen them at conventions and I spoke to them. I'm not saying we're friends. I'm not saying we're enemies and I'm not lusting after them. They're young like Nick too. I don't want to feel like some type of cradle robber or some shit, you know, at the time. What, what it, it is what it is. But anyways, uh, Nick acknowledged he does have a tall fetish, but he said he didn't do shit with him. I was like, well, to be fair, you know, I'm tall too. I try to get tall women when I can, but usually I don't find a tall woman until after she's gotten a man and I'm not going to sit here and try to manipulate the relationship till I can get me something because I'm not an asshole. 90% of the women I will probably ever date, even when I marry, will be closer to my navel than my chin. (laughs) Period. If I get a tall one, yay me. She's not for sale. But more than likely, not going to get that lucky. Anyways, so, uh, I end up just leaving this alone for the longest time until one day we're getting near the following convention. We got about two months before the next convention. There is no assumptions made as to the situation in the van. Everybody's going again. Everybody paid up again. I got my room. I was in a sweet suite with my friends. 
the uh, hotel let us divide the shit up among the cards, blah, blah, blah. Brandon was doing good. He got better than a floor space at the time. And I don't know and didn't really ask what Nick and Gina was doing, right? So, uh, about a month, a week, no, a week before the convention or two weeks before the convention, I'm on the phone talking to Nick. And I'm telling him about, well, yeah, I'm going again. I got me a nice room. It's going to have a kitchen too. Hey, just so we're clear, if you buy some food, you know, I'll cook it for you, but I'm going to eat some too. That's a good way for me to get free food at a convention. Most people hope they can find a vending machine. Bro, nope. I get a room with a suite. People know I can cook. And I said, hey, I'll cook you some shit, but I better be getting some too. Saves me a little bit of money or just a long distance walk to like, you know, a restaurant or a small grocery store. And he's like, yeah, that's cool. That, that's fine. So then he tries to text me right when we get off the phone. Hey, um, you can't be in my van this year. Uh, I'm not trying to have any fights or anything. You know, I'm a peaceful guy. Like, well, you're full of shit right now. Uh, but uh, someone in my van hates you. He's like, hey, Nick, pick the phone up. Why are you texting? You just get off the phone with me. Also, why do I have a feeling this person that magically hates me doesn't exist? Or you just don't want to get annoyed by your girlfriend because she's mad that I didn't help her. I don't help her deal with you when you're doing your mature shit. And I want to stay out of it. We'll, we'll touch on that incident later because that's what the phone conversation was about. He's like, it's not like that. So you're telling me Brandon's been talking to me for almost 12 months straight, at least two or three times a month. And you're telling me right now, Brandon fucking hates me. You want to see the screenshot and type of text me and Brandon been having? Okay, funny, it's my girlfriend. Like, she, she thinks you're like a threat to the relationship. Like, what does that even mean? It's like, I don't actually really know. Mind you, I'm paraphrasing some of the shit he said because, well, that text message was a long time ago. Is it still in my phone? Yes, but I ain't trying to dig for it. And I'm just like, Nick, are you fucking serious right now? You know I put down half a grand on my room, right? I can't pull out. If I pull out, I fuck over all my other friends. Because either A, that's their food money, or B, we all get fucked at the last minute and none of us can go, even though everybody ready. And their vehicles are full. Don't worry, bro. I have hope for you. You know, you're kind of a cool social butterfly type guy. I'm sure you can get uh, get a different ride. No, Nick, no. I can't. <laughs> Fuck you. You are not a man to me, and I will never consider you an adult again. I said something along those lines. So, and even if I didn't, that's what I was thinking. Now, here's the hilarious part. At that exact same time, a squirrel bit into some circuit breaker cords that were in the basement of my apartment complex. And my shit went out. And I was just like, you know what? I'm really getting pissed right now. I'm getting, I feel God of Destruction kicking in right now. And no, that's not some Dragon Ball reference, although I do appreciate being compared to Beerus, because I fucking love Beerus. But no, um, long time ago, my friends decided that they they've said that, look, when you get mad and you sit down and think and you don't hit nobody, you come up with some verbally dangerous shit. But to be fair, it's only people you hate. So we don't really, you know, think you need to change it. But just letting you know, man, you go to some dark places. I was like, what do y'all mean? And they gave me a list of references to shit that I did. But now I'm doing that right now. So I'm rolling through in my head everything that's happened in between the convention from 2015 to the convention that's going to happen in two weeks. And I'm just like, I'm about to do something. So I did what I always do when I'm becoming dangerous or so I'm told. I sit down and I think. So then I got it figured out. Yes, Gina is crazy. Yes, Nick has been saying that, hey, look, I am going to break up with her, but the reason I can't right now is because she, everyone will take her side. Dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. And it doesn't matter if that was true, which it wouldn't be because people know she's crazy. It wouldn't matter if that was true or not because people are going to make their mind up regardless of what happens. If she breaks up with you, same shit. You break up with her, same shit. It don't matter. Also, it's not other people's fucking business. And then I was like, business, not my business. Oh, shit. Now, 
sec almost second conversation I ever had with Gina, and it was like maybe four months later. Nick is bugging me to make him a snack, and he won't stop. Uh, hey Gina, why the fuck are you telling me? Like I'm seriously thinking that. Why are you telling me my boyfriend won't stop annoying me to make food? It's like, the fuck? Okay, okay, okay listen, Gina. Uh, I think you forgot or you know I'm a grown-ass man. And you're an adult too. Notice I don't call her a grown-ass woman. I just say she's an adult. So I tell her, like, look. Last I checked, instead of teaching him how to cook, you do most of the cooking, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you something. Tell him if he keep annoying you, you ain't gonna fucking cook anymore. The reason he's annoying you is because you probably let that shit work before, or it, it worked for him at some point in time. But he a grown man. He can go up in the fucking... He can go and order a pizza. He can go in the fridge, make something. Or he could learn to fucking cook. Give him an ultimatum. Which is a dangerous thing to do in a relationship, but if you need to a, a situation to be, under, to be taken as serious, you need to have ultimatums sometimes. Being assertive, basically. And so then the conversation, so then out of nowhere, she stops typing and then I go type into Nick in secret and I talk to Brandon because I tell Brandon, like, Brandon, is this normal shit between them? Because this is weird as fuck. He was like, bro, why are they even putting you in it? I don't fucking know. I wasn't even in the orbit of their relationship, but now they've decided to crash land me on that planet. So while I text out to Brandon, I go to Nick like, Nick. Why the fuck is your girlfriend bothering me about getting you to stop annoying her about making a fucking snack? But it worked though. No, 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 Nick. That's, I don't, first off, that's fucked up, but that's not my point. I'm not involved in this fight. She didn't ask me to help you resolve this issue y'all having. She's asking me to get you to stop. She's putting me in it. There's a difference between being a diplomat and trying to force somebody to be involved in something. This is not diplomacy. This is throwing a third party in the middle of a war. So I was just like, point blank, look. I don't know what's going on between you two. If you're going to break up with her, break the fuck up with her. But it looks real suspect and fucking weird. When you are, you, you claim she's crazy. You don't want her to do with shit. She hates or she's insecure around all of your friends, that female friends that are tall or look better than her. And she didn't set the bar that high. Go look in the pick dump section on this uh, discord. And now she's asking me to basically act like I'm your fucking daddy or uncle or some shit. And you're the most disobedient fucking child ever. You would not last as my child because I wouldn't take shit off you. And I've told him this before. I don't have children, but he's the type of person where I could say something like that to just to try to make him understand. You are not acting your own age group. So anyways, I'm basically sitting over here like fucking, bro, I'm not fucking with this. Stop what you're doing or don't, but you're not putting me in this and she's not putting me in this. So then uh, Gina says, so, hey, do you see yourself as like Nick's father figure? Where the fuck is this coming from? And I told her kind of what I told Nick. No, hell no. Nick is a very disobedient, irresponsible, immature child, and he's doing it on purpose. I don't, I'm not trying to make him be a better person because half of it is him having to do it his damn self, and he doesn't, and he's not. I don't know why I'm involved right now, Gina. But I, I'm going to tell you just one time because it's between you and him. If you want him to stop, tell him if he bug you again, nag you again about it, you're never going to cook for him again. And if he does do it and it works, then you know you, you shouldn't be fucking letting him do it in the first damn place. That's really all I can tell you. Then one time Nick came over, and this is in the early era of the podcast, but back before we had any dropouts, and me and Nick would specifically record together because we could do that. We start playing Resident Evil 6, and he starts talking to me about apartment complexes. I was like, oh, well, I mean... If you're trying to break up with her once she's already out of your parents' house or something, like, hey, look, you do what you got to do. I can't, I'm not getting involved with that, but I know you don't know apartments and shit. Look, I, I've been living in and out of apartments, uh, I think since I was like 
23-ish, maybe 25, I don't know. But I can hook you up and you can make the break over as peaceful or whatever as you want. Because I'm still in that delusional state where I'm thinking he just wants to have a peaceful breakup and he's too sensitive and insecure to handle people shit talking him online. I'm like, like you can hit the block list button. I'm, I'm being delusional at this point. But to be fair, I don't know how deep he is into the fucking dumbass immaturity scale at this point. I tell him the same thing I tell everybody. I'm sorry it has to end that way. I hope one day you guys can be friends or at least y'all can be civil around each other after it's over. Basic shit. Because I don't really give a fuck. So then he starts explaining to me while I'm trying to give Gina places and text her, hey, I know that, you know, Nick told me you overpaying rent and shit, and I know that that's not for and it doesn't help you, you know, pay for things in your daily life and blah, 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 blah. Here's some examples. She's texting Nick that's right next to me. Why are you putting him in our business? It's like, motherfucker, what did you do? Now, me and Nick didn't say those exact words, but that's what the fuck we were thinking. And she's going to, I don't like him in our business and blah, 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 blah. And and and, I, and I'm and I'm just sitting here like, dude, I don't know what the fuck to tell you, man. You might as well just move in an apartment yourself, and she'll automatically magically follow you or something, because she ain't trying to go where your dick ain't. It was like, yeah, it was like that weird shit she said about she's trying to protect me in the house I grew up in. Yeah, that was fucking weird. And there's still not an explanation for that, is there? Nope. I was like, okay, well look, you do you. And then he starts telling me about sex with her. By the way, let me. I'm gonna just say this. I know some people brag about their trophy people, you know, totally objectifying their significant other and their significant other don't got a problem with it. That's on them. But I have never gone out of my way and asked about Gina's sexual performance, what she looked like naked. And I literally almost remember exactly what I said to him once he told me how they have sex. They don't really have sex. He lays there like a fucking dead corpse, which, and he's a guy. He lays there like a dead corpse and she just does whatever she does on top of him. I was like, hey, Nick, as long as you've known me, what in God's name made you think I ever wanted to know what A, Gina looks like naked, and B, how sex is with her? Also, you do realize you don't actually do anything, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, don't talk to me about sex with Gina anymore, okay? And I was being completely serious, and he understood. It's like, okay. She was just fucking weird. Like I said, go into the pick dump section and you'll see what they look like. Um, and I'm just like, well, dude, I don't know what the fuck to tell you, man. Hey, look, I tried to not be involved. To, as far as I know, I'm really good at making sure she understands I ain't about to directly interfere with shit. And I'm still not trying to interfere with shit. All I'm trying to do is help y'all get to a situation where you can amicably or mutually do whatever you need to do because y'all don't work together. And even then... I can't tell you to go and say the words, you know, but he goes around and tells all of his guy friends, oh, I'm going to break up with her. I'm going to break up with her. She ain't shit. I ain't going to break up with her. She's crazy. Blah, 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 blah. Then I also remembered some dates don't line up because I couldn't figure out while I'm sitting here, I remember with the lights and the power off, why the fuck he just doesn't end it with her? Because that sensitivity shit ain't going to fly because if he was worried about his, how he was perceived, he wouldn't have just did what he did to me because he knew I was going to go on Facebook and say shit. So I knew something was off. Then I got another memory back. I helped these two motherfuckers move into the apartment they used to live in before they went, he went back to his mom's place. I asked Nick how he met Gina. He basically tricked her into fucking her because he didn't give her age so it was statutory rape before he was old enough to have sex with her by one year. Nick is one of those people who are uh, early bloomers. So he had a full ass manly ass beard, even though his voice is a little bit high and he was six foot two, six foot three since he was like 15, 16. Gina's like five, two, five, three, a bag of mashed potatoes. And she's like 24, 25. Or at the time she was 21. I was like, okay, did you just, admit to statutory shit in front of me. And that's what, that's what I'm sitting up here thinking and shit. I know he knows I'm not a pedophile or anything. I'm like, I was like, so I started Googling the statute of limitations on shit. And sure enough, unless she groomed him and there's some way to prove it past the statute of limitations, I think, or at least that's what Google said. But then later on that same day, 
I asked Sheena, so Gina, how'd you and Nick meet? She barely has a different fucking story and she doesn't realize how fucked up it sounds. Well, me and Nick met at a party, you know, we decided to go on a date and we realized it could be serious, but we decided to wait before we got together, you know, back when it became legal. Because for those who don't know, and it's still not heavily advertised, uh, about 15 years ago, the age of consent for Illinois changed from 18 to 17, primarily due to a lot of uh, 18 and 17 year olds, you know, being in a relationship or, you know, they'll be days apart, but then they'll be put on a sex offender list if they're having sex, consensual sex. And they're only like days apart and shit. There was a lot of that going on, apparently. That didn't apply here, as we all know. So I'm just like, okay, I feel like you're lying, piece of shit. And Nick just told me the truth, which is fucked up. But past statute of limitations, I think, don't quote me on that. So... I'm not even in a position where I can do it. Plus, they told me this shit verbally, not in writing. So I can't pass it to a cop or anything to, for them to possibly file a report. Unless they do reports on suspicion. I'm not sure. But anyways, and I'm just sitting up here like, huh. huh. I should have realized she was crazy back then. Then another memory hit me. I remembered, I have yet to tell everybody in archived order all this shit that went down because Nick's the type of person who's going to lie about this whole entire situation. And if he's not, Gina will do it because Gina did it to another person who I don't respect and that Gina hates Gerald Murray. Right? So I start archiving and looking through posts and messages and texts. I'm like, let me put shit in chronological order and have screenshots. Cause you know how it is on the internet. When people decide someone's nice, they don't want to believe they did some fucked up shit unless you show them. And even then they'll still think dumb shit. AKA Trump supporters. So fucking I go in and I remember I found an old conversation where Nick told me, or he lied at the time. I didn't know. He told me the exact date he was going to fucking break up with his girl or some shit. And I was like, Hey, well like, and I told him exactly what I told him verbally. I'm sorry it has to end this way. You know, I hope maybe one day you two can be friends again, or maybe just have a civil or be civil around each other when you're in front of each other. Right. I'm, that's my thing because I don't, I won't say I don't care when my friends have a breakup, but I put as much effort into the breakup as does my friends emotions. If they're destroyed, my girl was a bust down home. Like, Hey bro, it's not your fault, man. And I talk to them and console them. But if you're like, well, I'm gonna break up with her. This is like, okay, well, fuck it. You know, it's relative to the person. I remember the conversation when I told him like, you, well, I do have a person who would probably work better for you just because y'all both immature assholes. And as I've learned, uh, man, children and women, children are basically meant to be with each other because the only person who won't take you serious in a relationship with a man child is a woman child and vice versa. I said, okay, well shit, let me start talking to her. Where's she at? And I was like, nah, 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 bro. It don't work like that. Cause he was basically trying to use me to give him a pre friend. Now, for those who don't know what a pre friend is, it's a girlfriend who you have guaranteed is going to be your girlfriend or boyfriend. So you get with them. Claim you go get with them, and then the same day you break up with your fucking uh your uh current girlfriend or boyfriend. Basically, hypergamy and opportunist. The two people in the world you can trust the least. Hypergamist and opportunist, because they only want to do what benefits them. It's the ultimate selfish without saying you're selfish. But anyways, um, I was like, oh, I'm going to make this shit public and I'm going to save this document so I can always refer to it all the time. And I'm going to tag almost everybody involved. Now, I don't have Ashley and Erica on my Facebook or nothing, so I don't tag them. But to be fair, I think Nick may have already told them or something. Because anytime Nick hangs out with them at one point, the images don't tag Nick, even though he's there and shit like that, blah, 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 blah. So anyways, um, what ends up happening is he finds this and I talked to my friend, Jonathan Overton. He lives a few blocks away at this time. He let me crash for a few days and I, I still appreciate and respect him for it uh, until my power was straight. So my food didn't spoil or rot or nothing. Luckily, I didn't have a lot of food because this is when I was doing stand up travel. Had been out of the military for a few months and was just getting money back. Um, so anyways, fucking... I'm sitting up here thinking to myself, point blank, and I shit you not, 
I wonder how long till he sees this. So I told Jonathan what was going on because he had met Nicholas Devonish uh, a couple times. I don't think he knew who Gina was, but he had heard of Gina. I want to know just all this fucked up shit is going on. Like, bro, that is some crazy shit. Like, yup. Why were you involved? Dude, I don't even fucking know. I had nothing to do with the relationship. So anyways, um, what I end up doing is fucking, uh, we go out of our way to, he, he tells me that he, he responded to it. And one of the first sentences was something like everyone knows and says you're passive aggressive. I laughed for almost a, I want to know for almost a full week. There is no one who thinks I'm passive aggressive. And if someone thinks I'm passive aggressive, they don't know who I am. That's not a bragging or arrogant thing. Passive aggressive is not my natural nature when someone has pissed me off. I'll tell you you're pissing me off in case you, I think you're doing it on an accident. If you're doing it on purpose, I'll tell you to calm the fuck down. If you fucking loud and you in my face, okay, fine. We gonna box. I escalate accordingly. If you just giving me words to piss me off, I'm going to try to de-escalate the situation or let you know I'm trying to de-escalate the situation because you're starting to get to the point where we're not going to fucking use words. It's that simple. I'm grown. I'm not out here punching everybody I see the minute they piss me off. I didn't even do that when I was a kid. So, um, he tries to claim he's going to give me, quote unquote, a second chance or something like that. And I, again, I'm not reading this. People are telling me in the inbox, uh, Jonathan gave me the heads up to it and I just start fucking laughing my ass off. So what ended up happening was claims were being made of conflict going off. So eventually I see Nick at a convention. I don't duck and hide. I don't go nowhere. He is literally straight in my line of sight and I'm walking towards him. Now I'm not going to Nick, but I'm not about to stop going which direction I'm going in. This six foot three Somewhat chiseled man, I guess. Well, he remembered at the last minute. Oh, wait, Zax is a six foot trained killer. Uh, he remembered who I am and that I have no problem fucking up a child. He grown at this time. I have no problem fucking up a child, especially in the middle of a convention. You want to say you claim you want to come at me and you don't want to just do shit behind my back. Fucking he looks down and veers off, changes the complete and total path on the opposite side of me and doesn't do or say shit. Now, here's the creepy part. This mug stayed on my Facebook friends list for like three or four months until I had to ask my ex or my girl at the time. I can't remember how blacklisting works because I always forget how Facebook blacklisting works because it's rare for me to have to do it. Almost everyone I've ever blacklisted, I didn't blacklist it. I was, I asked my, uh, my ex or my girl or a dude I would know who's just in the area said, man, you should blacklist. And I was like, hey, do you know how to do it? Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, if you think they're going to be a hindrance or a problem, Hell yeah. Okay, well, go ahead and my shit and blacklist them. And they blacklist them for me. And that's it. Then they tell me how it works and where I go to do it. And I would forget because it, when I blacklist somebody, it's maybe like two people every three or four years. So it doesn't stay in my immediate memory. And that was creepy, but that was it. Then I found out exactly what I thought happened happened. Gina or Nick started going around making up shit, but they did it to this one dude named Gerald Murray, who apparently is the most selfish asshole and man child are similar to Nick, which is probably why they get along so much. So at some point in time, I think someone told Gerald, I was the one going around telling people that, Oh, he just wants to pump and dump people. And he'll lie about having a relationship. If it means he can get some ass and he even tried to do this to one of Gina's friends. Well, here's the thing. Nick told Gina, Gina told everybody I'm not involved in this. Cause whenever this happened, I didn't find out till years or months later. So I had nothing to do with it. But I got a text from him random saying, lose my number. See, I got eyes and ears everywhere. Well, that's a fucking lie. I know you've been talking shit. I was like, Gerald, I literally don't know what you're talking about. I'm not going to pretend I know what you're talking about. But you know what? Fine. Because I know I'm not losing nothing in this, in this situation right now. And Nick and his girl still shit talking behind his back to this day. Say all types of fucked up stuff. And here's the thing, though. They don't actually have to make anything up. They literally just describe how he is as a person to them. And as it stands right now, uh, yeah, Nick still hasn't done shit directly to me. No one has come up to me, tried to jump me. Uh, oh, and I think he's still dating Gina, but he still goes behind her back and tells people about the fucked up shit she's done, shows texts and screenshots. Now, 
Hey, Daywalker, what's the moral of the story? Don't stick your dick in crazy. Thank you. Hey, Lord Zenkai, what's the moral of the story? Crazy is crazy. I feel like I'm gonna have that Nose Barkley crazy song in the background or the instrumental so it doesn't get demonetized. But yeah, yeah. Okay, with that being said, that brings this episode of Life Stories to an end. And I appreciate you guys for coming. Sorry, I fucked up the original audio. And I will see you guys when I see you guys. Okay, that sounds good. Can't wait to the next one.